Take your Bibles this morning, turn to the book of Matthew in chapter 6, and we want to continue this morning our thoughts on pray after this manner. Pray after this manner. Let's read verses 9 through 15 again this morning. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Last week after beginning to look at pray after this manner, of course, this being after that he had directed them against hypocritical praying, praying as the hypocrites do, to be seen of men and to get glory unto themselves and praise unto themselves in whatever manner and form that took, even to making long prayers. He said, after this manner, pray ye. And we shall we have this divided up pretty much into three parts. And the first was the preface. And looking at the preface, which was our Father which art in heaven, we considered the address, our Father. Amen. And we spent most of the service in looking at our Father. And then concluded with the thoughts of which art in heaven. He's, he's everywhere, but his throne is in heaven. And as we approach unto him, we need to remember that as his children, as sons of God. He's our Father, which is in heaven. He's not of the earth, earthy. He's above the earth. And we're of the earth earthy. We're not above the earth. <laughs> which goes to speak of our unworthiness, which will come into play in to where we're going to begin this morning. The petitions. The petitions. The second part of this is the petitions. There are Six petitions that are offered up here in this model prayer, this pattern that is given to us for praying. Notice that the three, the first three, are to God. They are to God and therefore to His honor and to his glory. And then the last three get down to man, get down to us. And our request, it pertains to our needs and our physical and spiritual. Our need ought to be considered, yes, the physical, which Primarily, we are so wrapped up in the physical and we forget about 
the spiritual. But we have need of spiritual. The fact that these first three petitions and whether we get all three looked at today or just one or just two, whatever. The fact that the first th petitions, three in number, are to God, I believe that it teaches us to seek those things which are above. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, which is a verse that later on in this chapter we'll be considering in a, another message. So let us begin this morning by looking at the first petition. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed. The word is a word that most generally in the New Testament is translated sanctify or holy. Holy be thy name. He's not praying, he's not saying that we should pray that, that, that God's name would be holy, for God is holy. His name is holy. It might be better to insert the word is. Holy is thy name, rather than holy be thy name. As we consider this request, holy is thy name, or, or, or holy be thy name, however you want to uh, read it. In this first re re request, we, we ask nothing for ourselves. We're thinking only of God. When we go to prayer, we ought to, we ought to think and consider to whom we're coming to. And that's why he directed us to our Father, which art in heaven. You see, we're praying to him, and we ought to, our thoughts ought to be about him. And who he is. He's holy. Prayer, prayer lifts us out of ourself. Out of our selfish thoughts and, and feelings and hopes. And lifts us into that communion with God. Which is our very life. We owe our life to him. We owe eternal life. To him. Let us consider that. Let us consider the fact that we're coming before a holy God. This petition is first so as to teach us that we must come before God with reverence. And godly fear. Great reverence. The utmost reverence. And godly fear. Listen, there can be no true praying without reverence. If you don't come before him in the utmost all the utmost reverence for who he is. And he's holy. And you're not praying. There must be a, a deep sense of God's holiness. 
and my unworthiness. I'm not worthy to approach un unto our Father, which art in heaven. Why? Because He's holy. But I'm only able to through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Turn with me to the book of Psalms in chapter 89. Psalms 89. And verse 7. God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. Two things in this verse. We know that fear, quite often, in reverence to God in the scriptures, is translated fear, and it means in the Hebrew, it means fear, reverence. That's not this feared. God is greatly to be feared. God is greatly to, to be troubled at. To, to stand in fear of him. Consider that. We, we, when we, he is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints. I, I've often said if I reverenced him as I want if I fear him as I want wouldn't that serve as a deterrent to many things that I do in the flesh that are sinful that are against him that are contrary to him So, when we come before God, there ought to be that sense of fear. Shall I be accepted of him? I, I can just imagine the, the high priest who, who went into the most holy place once a year and he had to, he had to offer that sacrifice uh, for himself first. And there had to have been a great fear because if God didn't accept it, yeah. he'd been a dead man. Right. And that's why the, the bells and the hem of the garment. And if, if the others stopped hearing those bells, they knew to pull him out. God didn't accept it. But as we're in Christ Jesus, remembering that, we have access unto the Father. Yes. But it still ought not to be flippantly. It ought to be with great fear. And, as our verse says, reverence. And to be had in reverence. There's our word. Which many times in the Old Testament is translated fear. In fact, <laughs> it, it, it is more often translated fear in, than it is reverence. But it's the one that means to fear in reverence. A reverential fear of God. Turn with me to the book of Hebrews now. The book of Hebrews in chapter 12. In verse 28. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom...
we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, godly trembling. With reverence, a reverential fear, and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. See, we ought to come before God with great reverence and at the same time fearing Him for who He is. It's going to come into play when we get into and forgive our debts as we forgive others, our, their debtors, our, as we forgive our debtors. And then he expounds on that in the last two verses that we read in our reading this morning, verses 14 and 15, which we'll have more to say when we get to that part, which references are coming before our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Boy, don't, don't, don't even think about coming to him in prayer with sin in your life, unconfessed sin. Unless it's to confess your sins which we'll get into that later on forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors we'll have a place so God is holy his name is holy In this, hallowed be thy name, where, Father, you are holy. And thy name holy. May we never fall into the sin of taking your name vainly. Speaking your name irreverently. It's said concerning the Israelites that, that they stood in such fear of the name Jehovah that, that they would not even speak it. Lest they spoke it irreverently. They would use another name in his place. I believe over time they got away from that. <laughs> but you see, oh, that we would refrain from using his name except in cases of great reverence. In other words, when, we, when we're about to speak his name, consider whose name it is we're speaking and the reverence that is due under his name. Turn with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 6. Very familiar portion of scripture to us that are here uh, today. And I just want one verse. Isaiah 6 and verse 3. And, and one of the seraphim is, hey, well it's not one. You better read that more carefully. And one cried unto, that is of the seraphim, and one cried unto another. The idea there is that, that you, got, you got six seraphim, or seraphim, I don't tell you the number of the, the seraphim, but you got seraphim, plural, and one says to another, in other words, they're all saying one to one another, holy, holy, Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth 
is full of his glory. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Jehovah. Hallowed is thy name. Holy is thy name. Book of Revelation. And here we have this was the vision which Isaiah saw that we just read, but in Revelation we have the vision which John saw on the Lord's day, and it is a scene in heaven. In verse 8 of Revelation chapter 4, we read, And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. <laughs> He's holy. Amen. You probably heard me say, you probably heard other uh, pastors say, preachers say, the thrice holy God. <laughs> and why in scriptures is it that, that when we see reference made, as in Isaiah and again in Revelation, uh, talking about <laughs> holy, 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 why does it pronounce it holy, holy, holy? Three times holy. Because the Father is holy, the Son's holy, and the Spirit's holy. <laughs> you see? Amen. And one, God. And he's holy. Yes. Considering that, concerning who we are, we're vile, yes. sinful creatures of this earth. Unworthy. But he made me worthy through the blood of Jesus Christ. As I stand in Christ, I stand worthy before him. But it's only as I'm in Christ Jesus. In this prayer, in this request of hallowed be thy name or holy is thy name, we desire that, that his name <laughs> yes, his, his name is holy, but we desire that it be kept holy. And when we say kept holy, not that God would keep it holy, because he's, he's eternal and he's always going to be holy. Yes. He's never going to cease from his holiness. But, but we're desiring that we keep it holy. Amen. We men. The book of Exodus. The book of Exodus. And, yes, we'll turn there. Chapter 20. And I know it's the Old Testament law, but it's just as applicable today as it was then. God has not changed. He desires that we would love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. And to do so means we're going to do this. Verse 7 of the 20th chapter of Exodus. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. That is to speak it irreverently. To, to just speak it as though you would another word or another man's name. Seems to be a thread got started on Facebook. Somebody posted an article that somebody had written uh, about... Oh my, OMG. And how that's blasphemous. And I agree. 
It's bothered me for a long time, for many years. To hear people say that and don't let us do it. Unless we're saying in, in reverence to God and prayer to God, oh my God. As we have scripture of, of some of the saints praying, oh my Lord. They were praying to the Lord. They were speaking His name reverently. But the ones you hear saying that phrase today, it's not in a reverent manner. It's just... No, well, it's just a catchphrase. I mean, it's expressions of joy, it's expressions of sorrow, it's ex expressions of turmoil, whatever, but they have, have no thoughts of God and who He is. That's to speak His name in vain. That's blasphemous. It's to take the name of the Lord our God in vain. If I've been guilty and if you've been guilty, pray, pray to the Lord that, that we'll be convicted of that. And never ever do it again or any other manner which is in an irreverent manner. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 1 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 15 were admonished, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of con conversation, in all manner of your behavior. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. That is, God was speaking those words. Be ye holy, the people of God, be holy. Because I am holy. So, first of all, we're asking that by us, his name would be kept holy. By us, the people, by me. Lord, that, that when I think of you, it, it would be in a reverent manner. When I speak your name, it would be in a reverent manner. When I approach unto you in prayer, it would be in the most reverent manner. Considering whose name it is I'm speaking. Considering whose presence it is I'm coming into. Considering who I'm asking these requests of. And who I am. Secondly, <laughs> that would be kept in such manner by others. And that others would come to see that he is holy and his name is holy. So therefore, he ought to be approached in the most reverent Manner. First Peter chapter three and verse fifteen says this, but sanctify. There's that word, the Greek word of Matthew six nine. Hallowed. <laughs> it's a word that means sanctify, holy. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. In your hearts. Is he in your heart? Holy? And most reverent? You see, it's from the heart that proceed good or bad right it's from the heart to proceed adulteries and fornication and murder and all kinds of lasciviousness but if the heart is new created by God 
and from the heart pro proceed good things. From the heart proceeds reverence towards our God. He's holy. Sanctify him in your hearts. Make holy in your hearts. Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8 is uh, uh, the well what's in 1 Peter is a near exact quotation of what we have in Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 13. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. Let him be your reverence, your reverential fear and your dread, your terror. <laughs> your dread. Sanctify him. Holy. How do you think of the Lord? How do you think of God? In your heart. Is he holy? You see, God's holiness is to be glorified in our hearts. As the dwelling place of his spirit. Are we aware that his spirit dwells in us? Boy, I think many times we're not aware of it. I think many times we go on and we do the things we want to do and we go to the places we want to do, go and we talk the way we want to talk without no thought that the Holy Spirit's indwelling us. The Spirit of God. Is He sanctified? In our hearts? Not that. We're, if, he's, if He is in our hearts, then we, then we pray praying that, that it be made known not only to us, a greater awareness of His holiness in all that is revealed to us in Scripture of Him. Be in our hearts is most holy. But that it not only be to us, but that it be revealed to others as well. Do we care that others might come to know this? That others might come to glorify his name. We desire that, that his name be glorified in us and in others. Uh, John, the book of John in chapter 12. And Verse 28. Jesus, after raising Lazarus from the dead and coming to just about to the conclusion of his ministry, realizing that his cross lay before him, he said in verse 26 of the 12th chapter, If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. Yes. Amen. Father, glorify thy name. Amen. See, Jesus talking to the Father said, Father, glorify thy name. And then came there a voice from heaven, 
saying? I have both glorified it and will glorify it. In other words, in the life of Jesus Christ, in his incarnation and his earthly ministry, his obedience in his earthly ministry, God was glorified. The name of God was glorified in the person of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. God manifest in the flesh. And he said, and I will yet manify, uh, glorify my name in looking to the cross of Calvary, that which was Jesus was about to do, Amen. his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Amen. And yes, even his ascension to the right hand of the Father. And Jesus again in chapter 13 and in verse 31 said, Therefore, when he was gone, that is when Judas was gone out of their midst. He'd been dismissed. He's the one that's going to betray. He had no part in the church. Church discipline was exercised. He was cast out. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. <laughs> now it's done. He instituted his Lord's Supper, uh, the, the Lord's Supper, which pointed to the cross of Calvary, yes, amen. his broken body and his shed blood, which was laid just before, just hours before that. Jesus knew. And the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. He said, Turn with me to the book of First Peter. First Peter in chapter 4 in verse 11 oh pay attention to this verse all that are here myself included verse 11 if any man speak let him speak as the oracles of God if any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ. See, the qualifier is through Jesus Christ. Let, let every word that we speak be as the oracles of God. Be as God said, any of our ministry is to be done. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Every word that we speak ought to be as thus saith the Lord. Our ministering ought to be as of the Lord. That God would get the glory. Listen, brother, that's not just talking about here. That's talking about out there as well. Let us be considerate of that. Do we have that kind of fear and reverence in our hearts for God? That we would speak His praises. That He would be glorified. Yes. In all that I say and do, that he'd be glorified in my life by Christ. It's because of Christ. 
We say we're Christ. We say we're in Christ. Are we? Are we? Most importantly is our subject this morning regards prayer. It do us well if we're called upon to pray or if we're in our own private study. Yes. Just before we pray to take a moment and make sure that He's sanctified in our heart. Amen. Amen. We're about to approach unto our Father before his throne in prayer he's holy and we're to reverence him have the utmost reverence and fear of him and approach him in that manner yes. shall we stand have a song in closing brother Mike